guys are missing in the secondary? Um, it was different, but at the end of the day, we trust the guys that are out there. Um, we went out there with the same mindset to make plays and to get off the field as soon as possible. And just do, everybody did their job, so everybody did their job the best they could. Span of four, four games, you went from a backup to the only regular on the field. Uh, it's just been kind of a crazy stretch here for, for, for your guys' room. Yeah, it's been it's been crazy, but at the end of the day, like I said before, everyone in that room, everyone in the DB room, is a Division One football player. We're all here for for a reason, and we're all good enough to play. I know so, you guys have that kind of carry the play mentality, but how much do you guys put it on yourself when you see four you know starters out in the secondary for that next group to really step up? Uh, we go through it every day in practice. We practice that way, so it's not something that we're that's new. We 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 uh, we accept the challenge, you know. So when four new guys are up. Four new guys have to go in and do their job as expected to do so by the coaches. What do you see in the Nevada offense? Um, I see, I see pretty fast receivers, big receiver, one of them is six five. Um, we'll do, we'll, we'll do our jobs. We're just gonna go out there and play, trust our technique, trust our coaching, and go have fun. So weird. When, when you are out there with you know three guys that haven't really started a game before, or, you know, I guess Bell started, but not at that position. Do you take a little more on yourself at all? Does that change? I mean, you almost become the veteran, even though you are pretty young. Yeah, you have to step up your game, and you have to, especially, you have to focus in on, on communicating, because you know there's new guys out there. You're not, you're not. But in, when you're in practice, you have to stress the fact that you have to learn how to play with different people. So when we're in practice, we stress on that, just signals and just talking, talking through plays and everything like that. So we'll be ready. As corner, looking forward to playing a little more traditional offense and not uh, chasing a guy around as much as the decoy most of the day. Um, wait, repeat that question. Oh, again? Looking forward to more of a traditional, you know, throwing the ball and then not just kind of chasing around the guy that's the decoy most of the day there for us. Oh, I know what you mean. So, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to it. To be more passes instead of run. So, we just we practice that way, like I said, and we're just getting ready to have fun and let it loose on the field. If so, he gets to face a running quarterback too, you know, how does that change it? You know, a guy who can run and throw pretty, you know, pretty equally well. Um, you got to stay on your P's and Q's. Got to be ready as a as a secondary. We have to be ready for scramble drill because you never know at any point in time what he's going to do, whether he might run or just launch it downfield. So we just got to stay on our P's and Q's and read our keys and trust our technique. Sounds like there's been a lot of emphasis on trying to win on the road and making that a point. You guys have struggled a little on the road the last you know year and a half. But Coach Harshman was saying you guys kind of need to embrace. Quieting the crowd, you know, playing strong and kind of making your own energy. What do you what do you think about going down there? It's going to be a sellout crowd and a big atmosphere, and just kind of embracing that challenge. Well, I've never played there personally because last year they came to us, mm -hmm. but I've heard that it's, it's the game sold out, thirty thousand strong. So we got to go in there with a SWAT team mentality and be ready to play. You like that though? I mean, as a competitor, to kind of go in there in a hostile crowd and to have a chance to kind of shut up the opponent's fans. Um, I guess so. Yeah. Uh, playing away is always something interesting. Dealing with the crowd and dealing with the noise and the fans is always something. It's always an obstacle. Yeah. You, uh, second time in the last three games that you created a turnover in the fourth quarter. Uh, I don't know what, what did you just what did you see on that play, relying on technique or whatever to punch that ball out. Uh, I guess you could say that. Put your helmet on the football. <laughs> you know, I learned that from Coach Avalos. <laughs> uh, I mean, obviously. Like, Try to make a play for your team, be, be a playmaker in a time that you guys needed a turnover in the fourth quarter. Can we say that again? Did, 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 were you trying to, trying to make a play for your team, I guess? When you yeah, we were just trying to get the offense back on the field. That's what we needed at that point, to get points on the board. So that's what we did. How important has Corey been to you guys being able to play a couple of positions and sort of be that leader out there at a time when a lot of those guys are missing? Corey's a great player, very versatile. You put him at safety, you put him at nickel, linebacker, he's just – are all around great player. And he's a he's a mentor to me actually, because being a senior, you know, you look to him for advice, keeping him in the playbook and all that stuff like that. You guys voted him a captain on defense. What, what was it about him that, that made him the right choice? Just his demeanor. Um, he come, he's the guy that's gonna come in every day and be ready to work. He all, he's always willing to learn and he'll help you out if you need it in anything.